Good evening and welcome to the Greater Rutland County Supervisory Union meeting. It is Wednesday, January 26, 2022. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yay! Thank you. The approval of the agenda is the first order of business and if I can make one change to the agenda to move the ratification of the ESP contract to uh, right after the approval and above general public comments. I'll make a motion with your noted change. Motion by Mike, I'll second, second by all those in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. So uh, we all ha we held a carousel meeting prior to this meeting. All um, districts voted and ratified the G the GRC EA ESP master agreement, and so we will be ratifying it t tonight. Um, by the GRC issue board. So a motion would be in order. I move that the board ratify and approve the tentative agreement and the accompanying master agreement between the board and the Greater Rutland Education Association, educational support personnel, and authorize the chair to sign the master agreement on behalf of the GRCSU school district board. Motion by Tina, is there a second? Second. Second by Eric. Any comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you all very much and thank you to the ESP support staff for working with the negotiations team. Moving on to general public comments. We don't have any public with us here at Central Office. Is there any public on line that would like to speak? Yes. Hearing none, we'll move on. The minutes of November 17th, 2021. I'll make a motion that you're approved. As read, as printed. A motion by Mike, a second. Second. Second by Eric. Any comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I thought the meeting minutes were from November 17th. That's what I said. Oh, it says October 27th here. Oh, never mind. Okay, I'm Sorry. <laughs> never mind. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, approval of warrants. Warrants are sent to you via your GRC issue. Email questions should be directed to Lewis. A motion would be in order to approve the warrants. Make a motion we approve the warrants. Motion by Lynette. Second. Second. Second by Jeff. Yes. Any comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Uh, superintendent's report, Chris Sell. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, I, I promise I'll get back to the written report next month. Uh, this month has basically been a lot of town meeting work, budgets, uh, just trying to button a lot of things up, uh, negotiations as well. So it's been a, a pretty quick month. Uh, it's been very busy for, for all of us. Uh, so, you know, it always happens. I think we've, you know, said so we, we finalize a lot of things. We're, we have the warnings approved. We get our annual reports or uh, off to the printers uh, after a few last minute edits. So I think we're in a good place with, with that. So now it's just uh, getting ready for town meetings and our informational meetings as well. I know that uh, Lisa, myself, and the admins are working on their, uh, you know, getting the pamphlets ready to go, our uh, screenshots, I know that, and also our PEG TV presentation. What we're going to be doing with our PEG TV presentation will be similar to last year. Instead of going down to PEG TV and having us all kind of sit awkwardly around a table and uh, it, 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 we are going to be doing a screencast where each one of us will take turns 
kind of just you know talk a little bit about the school, about to kind of highlight some of the things that are on the slides. What, uh, what we did last year, it, we thought it worked well. It was convenient for us, and it actually thought we produced a, a nice quality product. So uh, we'll have that, and our goal would be to have that uh, on Peg TV. Uh, in probably early to mid-February. Our, our goal is really to get it finished by the end of next week and then out to Peg TV and then the quicker they can get it uh, turned around, the better. So we can get the information out to public. Uh, so when they you know, get to the, you know, the polls on the first, they're informed, they have uh, some questions. Uh, I know that one of the things that Lewis and I, uh, Malazzo and I have asked is that uh, each year, if there are questions, uh, you know, please submit them in advance. It'll be easier for Lewis and myself to come prepared for the informational meeting, so particularly around finance. Uh, Lewis is the guru, he has a lot of the answers, uh, so he, um, but it's a lot easier for us to, you know, if we get a question in advance, like I said, to have that uh, answer ready to go as opposed to on the spot at the meeting where uh, it may take a couple minutes for us to find that answer for someone. So if there are questions or concerns about budget or about any, you know, anything on the slideshow, please just reach out to us in advance or, you know, you know or if you can't make it, uh, also just uh, at that night as well. So uh, strategic planning, Portrait of Graduate, we had our second meeting. Uh, my goal is, I was talking to Lisa about this earlier, is that our uh, February 6th, well, hope, we'll see in our February GRCSC board meeting, I'd like to do more of a formal presentation, just kind of give an uh, update in terms of where we're at. Uh, you know, because you know, those who've been there understand that we have been working on developing, uh, developing competencies or skills, uh, you know, in terms of what our, our, you know, ideally what our graduates, you know, would leave with. Um, but I think there's some things that just you know, provide the public a little more information, you know, just about what what it is and the, kind of the good work that we are doing and what lies ahead as well. Uh, so, like I said, we're you know meeting three of four coming up, uh, and then uh, we you know a, a month or two we head off to strategic planning. So that's where the the real work begins. Um, the last part, and it'll be kind of a little segue into Lisa as well, because you know Lisa does a lot of work with this as well around COVID. It's just about the test to stay. Uh, we have sent out uh, memos re with regard to this. I think we've all seen in the newspapers that uh, you know uh, a while back, Governor Scott and Secretary French had hinted at a shift from a test to stay to test to home. Uh, we've always been, you know, as I said if you know the supplies are there and if we have the capacity to do this, we'll make that transition. Uh, we we saw a lot of schools, uh, you know, SUs and districts um, were a little bit uh, overzealous uh, at times. I think they, you know, had their, their intentions were pure and were in the right place, but I think they they start off without the, the necessary supplies. And I think we, I've been saying this for months that a lot of what we do is really dependent upon a supply chain. And, and we see that the whether it be test to stay or test to home, it's the same thing. And so uh, we uh, thought we'd take, take a more common sense approach. Uh, we have. A, a good amount of supplies right now still do test to stay at our schools uh, while still providing some kits to those families that need them uh, particularly around the new quarantine day four and day five uh, our hope is that within the next couple of days we will get the supplies necessary and then uh, once we have those supplies we will look to transition to test to home uh, you know so if, if we get supplies probably uh, tomorrow or friday we will look over the course of next week to really develop a plan uh, from an su standpoint in our schools and then I think the earliest would be would be probably the following Monday, so uh, you know the first Monday in February. Uh, but we will have information coming out uh, ne you know next week around this, probably around uh, Wednesday, Thursday at the latest. So, uh, so that's uh, my report. Any qu uh, questions? Okay. How do you guys distribute that? You take them around yourselves, or somebody comes so pick them up? Or? We're going to get a, a T-shirt cannon. <laughs> <laughs> Make it a little fun. Uh, no, I, I think that's Jeff. T-shirt cannons. Oh, right. No. So, so Jeff, I think that's one of the, the questions that we we've, we've all been answering is how do we? I'm just curious. No, no, it's a it's a good question because I think that's kind of a, the crux of all this is how do we di you know distribute these to our families? Part of the shift is really um, it, from you know Governor Scott's and Secretary French's was allowing schools <laughs> get back to what you know we're good at. That's educating kids and get out get out of the healthcare business. And while you know, as we make that transition, we still have to you know be seen as distributors. Where are we providing a resource for families to you know to test at home and to you know do the right thing? So you know we are looking at the best ways of providing uh, kits for families. Whether it be, uh, I know we've wrestled with uh, you know some uh, SUs or districts have talked about.
about you know stuffing backpacks. We talked about well you know do we want to you know have a, a first or second grader walking home with a backpack you know a test kits what would be the better way or if we have a common you know pickup or uh, pickup times you know but we also have to be sensitive of you know I know uh, Rutland Town School you know uh, mornings and afternoons are, are already chaotic as it is we don't want to add any more chaos to that so that's part of I think what next week will be at I think we have some good plans in place. Uh, to provide you know these uh, resource families, I know that last week we sent something out with a Google form, uh, and you know we had I think about 14 families I think you know who responded something like that, but we've been able to provide that. So, um, but that I think that's going to be part of that, and, and with, as with everything, I'm sure that uh, there'll be different iterations. I think you know the first couple of days might be a little more chaotic, and then we kind of learn a little bit, and then we'll tweak and you know uh, you know improve upon that. So I think it'll be a, hopefully a Pretty seamless process within the, you know the next week or so. That's awesome. Thank you. So, yep. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, Assistant Superintendent's report, Lisa. Good evening, everyone. Uh, mm. Similar to Chris, I will also return to a written report format next month. I think most people have seen enough of my writing coming out in emails this week related and last week related to um, COVID. Um, uh, just to, to sort of continue um, where Chris left off, just a, a tremendous thank you to our families and to our staff, in particular our nurses, our admins, um, our uh, administrative assistants who do an awful lot of this work on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, the guidance has changed incredibly rapidly multiple times um, starting over the holiday break um, and we on an almost daily basis are getting updates that either clarify extend or change uh, previous guidance that we have received so there's been and a lot of information for those folks to try and stay on top of and process we know we've sent out a lot of information for families and we have more coming um, so just again appreciate everybody's flexibility um, as we go through all of this it, it's sort of we've been talking about it um, as um, it sort of feels like March of 2020 in so many ways uh, because the same thing happened. We had so much information coming so quickly and trying to process the guidance and process all the information and then communicate that to all the different audiences that needed and put procedures in place and uh, communication tools in place um, was just a very intensive process and we've been sort of in another version of that cycle um, since the holiday break. Um, hopefully We'll get through sort of ironing out this this last little piece in the coming weeks, um, and we'll get the uh, information that we need from the Department of Health and the agency to to put those pieces in place, and then hopefully we'll have some stability for a while. Um, and as Chris said, get to get to get back to focusing on the the business of our business, uh, teaching and learning, um, and the students that we serve. Um, that said, there is a little of that going on too, of course, as much as we can squeeze out every single day. Um, so we're in the midst of uh, planning for. Our February in-service. This year we shifted that in-service day from March to February. We have one in February and one in March instead of two in March. And the February date was intentionally chosen to correspond with the completion of our mid-year map collection for our map assessment. So um, Al has been working, Al Gregorich, our uh, data manager, has been working with <coughs> the schools and the principals and the teams to make sure that mid-year testing is being completed to the greatest extent possible given students in quarantine and, and those absences. And we've been really tracking, monitoring, and trying to support that. Um, and then our teams are going to have um, a whole day in February to really dig into that data. And we've got some guided and scripted protocols and some professional development sessions lined up for them um, to help them through that process and make sure that that data becomes actionable um, and useful to people right away to make changes in instruction for kids. Um, so we're really looking forward to that uh, first time uh, kind of day to day for our district. <coughs> um, and our PLCs have been really hard at work on curriculum. Um, most groups uh, today, earlier today, um, got to the place where they were finished with uh, their first draft of identifying the core proficiencies for grade level and contents across all GRCSU schools, um, building on the work that they had done in their previous supervisor unions. And um, a big thanks to our instructional coaches for all of their support of those teams and to some of our principals for helping to facilitate and support that work. Um, we're really excited to 
uh, get a chance to kind of pull it all together. The next step for us is looking at it vertically um, and taking the work that each of these groups have done and then looking at it pre-K-12. Um, and we're going to be pulling together a group of people to help support that work. Um, uh, and our goal is that by the time everybody comes back in August that um, everything will be in jump rope with common core sets of proficiencies for each grade level and content area. Um, which is, uh, I think, within our within our grasp. So um, that will be a huge step in unification for us and support our teachers in, in calibrating and aligning their practices um, in a really big way. So exciting, exciting things like that going on too um, in the midst of everything else. And um, I know Al is planning to come with me in uh, April after town meetings to share some of that mid-year map data um, with this group and then, then our accompanying boards um, so we'll have a chance to share that out with you as well. Mm -hmm. Questions? So when will the board um, be able to see the map data and how that has impacted student outcomes? So you're looking at it in February. Mm -hmm. It's going to be available right away, actionable. Yep. So it should be being used ASAP in classrooms. Yep. <clears throat> So when we return in the fall, are we setting a the threshold about where students or classes are and this is where we're going? I feel like we haven't, I, and I realize a huge part of it is because of COVID, but we haven't seen any of this data in a really long time. Yep. So when when's the board going to be have this information to start reviewing and and seeing that we are making growths or seeing that you know what the deliverables are from yeah. from doing all this work yep so map is administered three times a year mm -hmm. as a benchmark assessment so uh, you know we had some gaps in it because of COVID um, but barring that we should have three different testing periods every year where data is available to schools can be brought to the board um, in whatever fashion you'd like. Um, the, the kind of takeaways from in-service on the 9th um, will, will probably be more school-based. We can talk about you know, SU level things, but the, the goal is for schools to look at their data and teachers and teams to look at their data and use it in their buildings with their students and the work that they're doing. Um, so having either principals <coughs> at, at local board meetings talk about exactly what their staff is doing as action steps might be a very clear way to do that, um, or we could try to maybe summarize some of that um, for this level board. Um, at, at whatever it just seems like so different. many of our classes are so small the cohorts that I mean when we start talking about them at local level we can't really talk about things because it's too identifiable yeah. so to start looking at real data we really have to look at it at this level where things are kind of all meshed together to be able to see anything <clears throat> so in July could we say that there would be a report that would show what those benchmarks are and where we've moved in the last year and where we think we're moving. And then when we start in the fall, we could have um, individual boards could then, you know, have principals or whatever do presentations of what those action steps are. Yeah, I mean, we could schedule reports after each of the benchmark periods. Um, it's a very we have the data so okay very, very, we're looking at it anyway it's very no very I, I think it, it would forward. be good to see right. yeah. we, we haven't idea. seen it or, yeah. you know since COVID I would think yeah yes so that would be great if we could incorporate that in <clears throat> anyone else have any questions all right thank you moving on to personnel in your packet you have <coughs> A page and a half of contract recommendations. Does anyone have any questions about the recommendations? I do. Okay. I just wanted to know what a PLL course participant is. What is PLL? Um, so PLL is Partnerships for Literacy and Learning. Um, we 
Uh, both of the Proctor schools with their school improvement grants have contracted for a partnership with literacy and learning um, to do <coughs> on-site consulting with their staff around curriculum development and instruction and uh, assessment analysis uh, for literacy. Um, part of what the offerings are um, that are related to that consultant work but not included in it are that individual staff members in those schools can uh, participate in deeper professional development offered by PLL um, and related to the work that they're doing with their their grant already okay any other questions That's a two -year -old. Mm -hmm. no I'm okay all right a motion would be in order to <coughs> approve the contract recommendations as presented so move motion by eric second I'll second second by tina all those in favor aye 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 aye, aye. 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 any opposed motion passes unanimously resignations and retirements are on your handout. Any questions or comments about those? Okay. Hearing none, a motion would be in order to accept the resignations and retirements as presented. So moved. Motion by Lynette. Second. I'll second. Second by Mike. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. In your packet, you have a handout for open positions, which is information only, and finance. Lewis. Is Lewis here? Hi, Lewis. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, so I have two meetings, two items for you tonight. Uh, so the first one is uh, under monthly financials, including the packet will vote uh, the system generated Pronounce that we provide each month, uh, but then also uh, yesterday you should have received uh, forecast for the general fund. Uh, currently, we're estimating that the general fund is running a surplus of approximately twenty-one thousand um, dollars. That's just a, a conservative forecast for right now. Um, the the big variable is with all these grants, we have an indirect cost rate that we could take from the grant. So we can choose uh, whether we need whether we want to pull that money this year or um, pull that out of the grant next year because the, the grants do run over multiple years. Uh, so, so we'll monitor how we're doing for the year and if, if we're running. Uh, so, so the amount that I, I I don't have us pulling all of the indirect out of the grant. Um, so if we're running a, a a surplus, we can discuss that at the end of the year whether we want to pull more or less indirect out of the grant to be able to. Uh, finish with a surplus and return that to districts or push that into next year. Um, so we do have uh, some wiggle room here and we'll discuss that as the year progresses. Uh, with our with our annual grants like Title and IDAB, Title One School Improvement, those we do need to pull the indirect out um, by the end of the year. It's really Esther that I'm referring to where we have that um, where we have that wiggle room. Esther 1 will pull out this year, but Esther 2 will still be using next year. And so, so that one, we, we can decide to release next year if we choose to. Any questions on the financials before I move on to the next topic? Uh, so the next item is a special ed van. Um, we talked about a van replacement uh, a few months ago and we were talking about a mixed usage van and we, um, based on the conversations that occurred, we kind of scrapped that idea and uh, came up with a new plan. Uh, Core Valley is doing their own thing and then um, uh, GRCSU is looking to do something different. Uh, so we did receive a special grant this year. It's called ARP IDB. Um, so it's a special ed only for special ed purposes. Uh, we are down one vehicle um, due to the, the accident, the accident that occurred this fall that resulted in us totaling the vehicle. Um, so right now we only have uh, one special ed vehicle remaining. Uh, 
both of the vehicles were purchased, I believe about 10 years ago with our money back when we received that other funding during the, the last crisis. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so even the one that we have at, at, it's right now a station that in the town is aging um, and um, pretty close probably to the end of its useful life. Um, I think it's about 10 years old. So we're looking to purchase two new vehicles with this new grant. Uh, they would be special ed vehicles uh, used simply uh, solely for special ed purposes, transporting students um, to, to schools, to and from school. Um, the estimated cost of each of the vans uh, um, in the packet is just some information on the 2022 Ford Transit Connect. Um, I did check with several of the, the local competitors, such as Toyota, um, Chevy, uh, Honda. And, uh, let's see, I have a list of them. And the, the Ford Transit was uh, the cheapest out of the four the um, and provides many of the same what? options as, as the other vehicles. Like the best. <clears throat> so they're approximately 30000 each. We're looking to purchase two. Um, the equipment approval has already been <clears throat> submitted to the state and, and has come back and that was approved. We're waiting on final approval for the actual grant. Um, but if we get approval tonight for these, then we can move ahead as soon as we get that approval from, from the state. I'll make a motion to go ahead and purchase them uh, pending um, approval of uh, the grant from the state. Discussion. Discussion. I had a I had a question. Um, oh, oh, uh, you know, I think you know maybe you can refresh my mind. I know we talked about this back in December, but uh, are, are these vans um, are 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 they kind of f used full time? I mean, can they essentially be repurposed anywhere in the SU as needed, or? Yes, these would be SU vans and they would be placed at schools based on the needs each year. Um, and they would be managed by the Director of Student Support Services. Okay. Christine, do you want to, you have anything you want to add about that? Yeah, I mean, they, they do, and just to clarify, they have to be used specifically for special ed purposes. Um, but that can be, we have students that go to different activities. We have students, you know, during the day that need to be transferred around for um, part of their programming and also um, depending on if we need to get students to different locations. Right now, um, we're really struggling with Betcha Transit too. They, they are lacking drivers, so some of the runs they were doing for us, they're not able to do. Um, so, All right. it, it's a struggle. All right. I, I, but yeah, they would be flexible throughout the issue and on the need. And that's what I was getting at because I understand there might be a greater need in, um, you know, in, in Quarry Valley or, or Rutland mm -hmm. Town. But you know, if, if there was a need in Wells or Middletown Springs, it, it, it would be an option to be used. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Mike. Uh, Lewis, can you tell me roughly over the last three years how many miles we put on these? Approximately. I cannot. Um, Christine, do you have that? I don't have it off the top of my head. I know we do have to keep a, a log in the vans for what we're using them for to verify if we get audited that it's for special ed purposes. Uh, but I don't know exactly. It, it, again, it varies from year to year depending on where we need to go and where we're transporting to. No rough idea? I don't know, honestly, um, where we're at with it and what the mileage is. I don't know, Lewis, but did you know what the mileage was when that van was totaled? Uh, I don't believe I have that in my file here tonight. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know typically, I mean, it's typically the vehicles are being used just locally, um, but there is always the uh, chance that they'll be used to transport students um, say we had a placement in Burr Burton and we can't get um, a special ed placement and just throwing out some names um, and we can't get Betcha to transport that on a daily basis 
uh, we may look to, to hire somebody to transport that student. So I mean, it, it allows us to be flexible and, and meet the needs of IEPs. Um, so the mileage could vary greatly from year to year based on how that van is being used. Uh, I don't have, I'm just looking at my, in my file here and I don't see where I have the information on mileage. Is there a reason you ask? Yeah, I'm just curious as to you know whether it's effective to either purchase them or maybe lease them with miles. Sometimes, um, sometimes leasing with miles, especially in the summertime yeah. when you're not. Lewis, you did that comparison, right? Because we had to do that for when we put in for the approval. So a, a lease purchase um, is required for in order to get approval through the grant, and I do have that here. Um, and it was definitely more economical to purchase. Uh, these vehicles aren't aren't the, your typical consumer vehicles, uh, where you would have uh, very good lease programs. So the the lease prices on vehicles, you you would have to go into a commercial lease pro program. And so the lease was between six and seven hundred dollars a month for one of these vehicles, even though the cost of the purchase is only thirty thousand dollars. So I believe there was about an eight thousand dollar difference over the course of a five year term. Um, if versus leasing it versus purchasing. And at the end of the five years, we own it as opposed to with a lease, we would have to give it back. So it was definitely a lot more economical. <clears throat> okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Kim Metcalf, who I know has driven the van, said the one that um, she thinks was totaled, that was, had about 80,000 miles on it. And um, that's, it's just over, the vans were here when I arrived. I've been, this is my 10th mm -hmm. year, so they were probably Eleven years or so. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tina. Um, Lewis, I was just curious: Are either of these vans um, handicap, like accessible? Do they have um, wheelchair ties or things like that? Uh, so this is similar to the van we currently have at West Rutland. That's a, a non-special ed. Um, so they they are low to the ground. They they don't have a spot for for a wheelchair. Um, but it's definitely something um, they can be um, changed to be to have that spot for the wheelchair if we needed to down the road. I believe the seats come out. How many seats are in these? It has a third row, so it has. I believe it has the two bucket seats, and then it has a bench seat in, in the way back. Right. Two, and two, and three, we can't transport two, three, two. more than five people in an e-vehicle, including the drivers. Otherwise, they have to be, Commercial. unless you do them as, right. um, they have to have the school bus signage and mm -hmm. certified driver so, for insurance purposes. So purchasing two vans for the SU, <clears throat> special ed director is going to determine how the vans are used or where they're located. When, so that means what? In the morning, or you're going to determine that? We usually know who's being, who we have to transfer based on the requirements and their IEP and what we're doing. So they, they typically, we know where they need to be located for people to utilize them. I mean, they stay pretty much positioned in places. That's been my experience over the last <coughs> year. Excuse me. Lynette. We're getting two new vans now. It's going to replace the one that is currently just located at Roland Town. One of them. No, they would be in addition to. So the one in Roland Town is still currently running. So right. one, of them, one of the new ones is replacing the one that used to be the Proctor one, then it went to West Roland. Um, so it's replacing that one. Rough. I'm not sure that we have a station for it, a location for it yet. And then the other one is just an additional one that could be stationed somewhere in the SU, which will eventually replace the Rutland Town one when that one is no longer economical to repair. That was my only question is what were you going to do with the one in Rutland Town? Are we selling it, keeping it? What are we going to do? Keeping it for now. <coughs> no longer Excuse me. Thank you. And the money that we got when the van wrecked is where? In a, in a fund to buy these or just went back into the general? 
Uh, currently, it is sitting in limbo. We are um, inquiring with the state how we need to handle it. Because they were purchased with federal funds, um, the money that we got back uh, may need to be reapplied to federal funds, and we're not quite sure how we have to do that. So we're still waiting on guidance from the state. And how much was that? Make it's sure. approximately $9,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Hmm. Uh, I just wanted to know uh, the the maintenance on these vehicles. Is that covered in the grant, or is that just? Yeah, uh, that's usually put into. Um, it either comes in the grant or through our our special ed budget. We always put money aside for you know oil changes, maintenance, whatever has to be done. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Does the does the insurance come out of the out of the money? Grant special ed budget. Special ed funds, yeah. Sinclair H. Okay. So why don't you ask them? Okay, I'll ask it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering if we we're not sure what to do with the um, eight or nine thousand we got from the van that was in the accident. If we'd be anywhere near if we traded in the Rutland Town van and used that money, how close we would be to getting another new van or a newer van to replace the third one. I would just, I'm um, simply guessing that the value of the other, the Rutland Town van would be similar to the value that we got for, well, I mean, you, you always get more when it's total because the insurance value is the replacement value as opposed to a trading value um, that you're getting in the dealer. So give or take a, a few thousand dollars, maybe we would get six or seven. Um, for trade-in value, so we'd be looking at probably 15. Mm -hmm. another ten to twelve thousand dollars that we would need to get a third vehicle. The only, uh, the reason I ask is not that I necessarily think we need another brand new van, but before we give the money back, right. I think it's an option we definitely need to look into. Um, because well, we I mean, we definitely don't want to give the money; just give the money back. So that we definitely we're looking, exploring to see whether we can. Uh, at first, we were just putting it in special ed, um, which, based on the current reimbursable model, we would have had to give a piece of it back. Um, but we, we would prefer to spend it on, on something, whether it's um, vehicles or uh, maintenance for these vehicles, either like a, 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 a an extended plan. Um, or some other special ed expense. We don't want to have to just give the money back. So definitely I can let you know once we hear back from the state and we can talk about it at the next meeting. Okay. So currently Rutland 10 is the only other um, special ed van in the SU. The one that's sitting there, yeah, yeah. is the only. We just have that one right now. Right. Okay. The 10 year old one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but that does make sense. It, it no. just, it seems like just thinking how our SU is spread, that having two vans does not seem to be um, the best plan. And I mean, Wells Springs and Pulteney are so far over. I mean, to think that you're going to take one from over here to put I, I don't know it, it just is, doesn't seem like a great plan now that our SU has changed in um, region um, I, I think we, we we do also have the two trucks that are were purchased with federal funds they're not special ed trucks but I mean because they're not special ed they can be used for for any purpose so Definitely, that that is an option if there was a need, and they have already been used. Um, they've come in quite handy this year with buses that are down, either due to staffing, uh, bus shortages, uh, or not bus driver shortages. Um, they were used in West Rutland when their bus was down. Uh, Pulteney has used theirs for a special ed student transporting them um, on a daily basis at the beginning of the year, um, as well as the end of last year. So, so we're utilizing those trucks for both special ed and non-special ed needs. 
Yeah, my concern is that we're talking about special ed students and we don't have um, vehicles that are um, ADA accessible. I, I, th I think those are two things that need to probably work, be working a little um, closer in tandem rather than saying that we can or we might. Um, we know we have students in our SU that need that for accessibility, so it's a little concerning that we wouldn't be purchasing a vehicle that has that already in place. I, I guess I'm a little um, troubled by that. I second that. No, I, I agree totally. I just, um, yeah. I don't like, I mean, you, you have a vehicle that's 10 years old. Yeah, it hasn't been in an accident. How long before it? Brooks. And so I'm just wondering if it wouldn't be better to bite the bullet and get a third one, trade the other one in. Um, maybe the third one can be at least um, accessible. And I, I know it's going to cost us money, but I... I don't know. What about that $21,000 surplus we were talking about? Is that something that could be reapplied to something like this? If we chose to pull whatever the difference would be out, if we, if we took, if we can keep the $9,000 and trade the other one and get mm -hmm. six or five, or, yeah. could we take the difference from the 21 that we anticipate to be the surplus to buy the third van? Is that what then? Possibility. Well, I mean, we definitely can. It's 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 just okay. fun money. It could be used for pretty much anything. Um, there are additional ARP IDV funds that we can access as well. Right. Um, we were actually at, when we started this process, we were looking at getting two vans, and we put in a price of ninety thousand, uh, anticipating that they would be forty-five thousand each. But then after some research, um, just looking at a, a base van without any of the bells and whistles which is not something that we need just um, making sure that they have as many safety um, <clears throat> devices in the in the in the van equipped as possible uh, we realize we can get them for 30. Um, so there is extra money there that we could utilize we had planned on saving some of it for next year uh, for special ed expenses but if the board wishes us to purchase a third one we can look so we have to go through the process again and adjust the grant and get the equipment approval again uh, but I don't think there's an issue with that. And then if we could retrofit one mm -hmm. so it is um, we haven't voted, right? usable yeah. for um, wheelchair or, or whatever <coughs> that is to have the ramp. I mean, when I when you look at this one, um, <coughs> you know, it, it and it, find out what that price is. So we had at least one retrofitted. Um, to be ADA compliant, I think would be um, important. Madam Chairman, mm -hmm. I would like to rescind my motion. Okay. Second has to also agree. All right. And were you the second? No, I wasn't. Was Tina uh, the second? Oh, okay. Seth was the seconder. Seth was second, okay. It would be. So, do you agree to re to rescind your second? To the Absolutely agree. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, table. I make a motion to table so Lewis can investigate. Can we see what Amanda wants time. to say? Oh, okay. She's Sorry. Amanda. Sorry. Um, I was just wondering when we were talking about additions for ramps and wheelchairs and such. Do we have a need within our special ed students for like five point harnesses or additional? safety belts that may be used more often than wheelchairs and ramps that should be put in all of the vans and one of them accessible with a ramp. I I just didn't know if... Right, and that's what we said, to ret retrofit one van <coughs> that would be um, usable with the ramp for wheelchairs. Not all three of them, just the one. Just one. As far as the yeah, safety, but as yeah. far as the safety belts... They have to be. Yeah. They, they, I think most of them already have them. I know that Rutland Town does because I did the yeah. installation. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so I'd ask if, if you support the purchase of these two, that we move forward with these two is because if we do have to order them with the current car market, which can take several months, and then we can bring back additional information on the third. I don't. 
Well, let's, let's get bite the bullet. Let's get the third one. If we're looking at purchasing a third. Can't make a deal with it. Make, see if we can make a deal with three instead of just two. But let's let's get all three now instead of. I'll let you make the motion. I'll let you do it. <laughs> okay, I would like to make a motion that we proceed with the purchase of three vans, selling off the ten-year-old van that we have, and applying that money along with the money we have from the insurance company on the one that was totaled in the accident, um, and look into, while we get those ordered and everything, look into what is needed to retrofit one one of the bus, uh, one of the vans anyways to be accommodating to a wheelchair. Look into it or make sure one of them is. Right, well that's what yes. I want yeah, to do. Yeah, to retrofit. Right. So, so yeah. make to sure, retrofit not just the third look one. into it, to make yeah. one of them. One will, one will de be wheelchair accessible. Right. Yeah. Which means you have to have a raised roof on it. Mm -hmm. To go up. That's going to be 60000 Okay. So, is there a second to Lynette's motion? I wish I could. Bite your tongue. I'll, I'll second it. Thank you, Tina. Second by Tina. Any comments? Uh, sorry, can you repeat that motion again? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. I'm seriously? We <laughs> proceed with the purchase of three vans, sell the Rutland Town 10 year old special ed van, and pool that money with the insurance money from the wrecked Proctor uh, West Rutland van of $9,000 and retrofit one van to accommodate wheelchair accessibility. Okay. Um, all right, Lewis, weren't you saying that, that a third van could be purchased with ARC funds? However, funding. Yes, yeah, I mean, we could use ARC funds and the insurance money to purchase the third van. Um, so so the, the motion is a little bit different than I thought we were talking about. So you're talking about having only a net of three in the end, not three plus the Rutland town. Correct. Right. Okay. Okay. Any other? We're fine with that as well. Okay. Any other questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any aye. aye. <laughs> it's like in, it's like in rounds. I know it. <laughs> uh, any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Did you have anything else for us, Lewis? And that's it. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you, Lewis. Um, old business. Is there any old business to come before? Did you want to go back and do the? Oh yeah, sure. Sure. I'm going to go back and read the um, resignation and retirements into the record. Okay. The resignations: Emily Hastings, Pulteney Elementary, Para resigned 12/9/2021. Suzanne Wagner, uh, Wells Village School. Uh, special ed teacher resigned effective 114 22 Cody Boyle Proctor High School special ed teacher resigning at the end of this school year and the retirement for Lori McNeil Rutland Town pair retiring effective at the end of this school year Make a motion to accept. Oh, we already did. Right. We already did. I'm just, I'm just right. reading it. Someone asked. Okay. Uh, any old business to come before the board? Amanda. Amanda? I was wondering if a final decision had been made on subcontracting any of the IT stuff or if that was still in the works. That's still in the works. Any other old business? Any new business to come before the board? Uh, one of the things that came through, and of course now I can't find it, but um, Governor Scott um, Waive the open meeting law that you can actually now have meetings without having a um, physical location. So I just wanted to verify with the board that we're good continuing to meet hybrid like this or if there were any changes. And he's waived it till January 23rd of next year. May I ask a question? Yeah. 
Uh, question is to you. I know, especially this month, you've been inundated with meetings, um, and you have to travel quite a ways. So I'm kind of curious on your thoughts. Should we make maybe the Gurksu meeting hybrid um, so that you, and maybe one each of the other towns so that that's in anything else be virtual so you only have to travel to what six meetings a month here <laughs> I, you know while I I would appreciate that I think I I do think there is a need to uh, at least for our local districts you know mm -hmm. maintain a hybrid um, where individuals who choose to who choose to attend in person could but those who would also want to attend virtually would as well I think it's we found that participation has been higher in doing that um, I think the Gerksu well I think it's great to see you all but it's it's just us and we, we could have the same conversation so I think it unless there's a conversation that would warrant a physical location where we may have some individuals who want to come in uh, I would support that that uh, the, the Gerksu could be the the, the virtual while the virtual. our local districts would, would remain hybrid I'm fine with that so that as long as I know in advance, I think my, my wife has a pretty good schedule in place. That would be my preference, then. Well, I think whatever decision we make this evening, that um, I realize that we will all reorganize in March. Right. But, um, or, or do you want to wait and make that motion when we reorganize in March? So that would be two meetings. I, I don't know, I'm asking. Most, and maybe only a month, uh, one, one, I make one a meeting. You, yeah. I you make could a make a motion that there are February meeting is virtual. all virtual and we could do the same in our, our reorg meet if you want. I'm, I'm fine with that, so yeah. either way is fine. I, I, I'm just asking, it just came through, so I just wanted to see how people were feeling about that. So I don't know, what are you thinking, Eric? I mean, I, I'm fine with, with the hybrid, but I mean, if, if we don't have to have uh, a physical location, then yeah, um, you know, we can uh, just do virtual. I mean, either way, I, I'm I'm fine. Okay. I mean, if we're talking locally, that's uh, no. We're just talking at this moment, just at the SU level. I mean, whatever you. I mean, I think you should probably everyone should probably put it on their agendas for their um, February meetings because it is something that just came out. Yep. Um, but we only have uh, authority over the issue. So. So is there a motion? Make a motion, Taylor. <laughs> okay. That wasn't the motion I was thinking. I know. Me wasn't. either. But is you can there vote, a, you can vote against it. Is there a second <laughs> to Mike's not, motion? Or we could just not second yours. That's right. Be like, well, it's one of the challenges. All right. Uh, Mike's motion fails for <laughs> lack of a second. The first time. <laughs> Are there any other motions? I make a motion that the Girk Sioux meetings go um, virtual um, starting next month. Okay, so we will not have a physical location. It will strictly be a virtual GRC issue meeting. Correct. Is there a second to that motion? Hmm, maybe that one fails too. <laughs> I'll, I'll second that. <laughs> oh, Meredith seconded it. All right. <coughs> any comments? Can we revisit that at any time? Yes. Sure. I was thinking we may want to do that under the reorganizational anyways. Well, yeah. That's what I was thinking. I don't because know. you could have a whole bunch of different people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Aye. I'm opposed. Okay. Motion <laughs> passes by majority. And I think it probably should be revisited in March yes. because that is reorganization. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. But I just I, I didn't know if it's everyone was fall. aware that that change had come through. Yeah. You saw it. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other new business? 
just for this one though. All right, we have policies for second read in front of us and those policies are F6 for transportation and F12 weapons and firearms. I make a motion to approve F6 and F12. Motion by Lynette is our second. I'll second. Second by Eric. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. And these are first reads, so a motion is not required. G2, use of copyrighted work. H1, parental involvement. And D4, volunteers and work study students. If you've read through these and you have any kind of comment, change, or suggestion, um, if you have it tonight, you can share it. Otherwise, um, please send it to Eric as chair of the policy committee. I have one. Okay. Um, on the volunteers and work study students, we discussed this, I think, at our most recent meeting um, in Rutland Town, that where it says implementation, um, it can be, I think, a lot to have the superintendent alone approve every volunteer work study student that enters a building, um, especially when he's not or she, whoever, you know, whoever we have at that point, um, isn't always physically present. So I thought maybe it could be, it could read approved by the superintendent or his designee or his knees. Um, so that way, if he says Lisa can go ahead and approve it, because he's out of town or at a meeting, then it still follows our policy. Great idea. Okay, so Eric will take that to your yeah. committee. All right, great, thank you. All right, um, our next, meet, next virtual meeting will be on <laughs> February 16th. And so that's a change from February 22nd. 23rd. Or February 23rd, sorry. So if everybody can just make a notation of that. And we do have a need for an executive session for <laughs> contracts and negotiation. So make a motion to go in executive session for contracts and for contracts personnel. All right. So I'm going to say we will come back um, for executive session at seven ten. All right. And board members should um, have a separate link for um, executive session. We need a motion or a second and a vote. Yeah, uh, second to go into executive session. I'll second it. Seconded by Tina. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you.